list here because according to the Alzheimer's Association, two of the following core mental functions must be significantly impaired to consider dementia. Would you would you agree with this now? Out of these uh, out of these two, but, but let's let's even take it a step further. Out of these five that you see here, the mental functions impact of a dementia, which ones do you see more common, more usually? Yeah, I mean, the uh, most frequent certainly is memory, uh, and in fact there are just to distinguish it from other types of dementias, there are very specific types of dementias where you instead will have problems with language. For instance, I've got a guy who came in the office last week in his 50s for the past year or so, he can't really say things. He talks this gibberish that is really difficult to understand. You ask him a question and he starts answering in these nonspecific terms which don't quite relate to it. That is a type of dementia called a primary progressive aphasia. So it ends up, aphasia is lack of talking, lack of language. That's a very specific type of dementia that's not the usual. The usual is Alzheimer's where you really have memory problems. Um, and that's first and foremost what you'll see. Those other types of memory problems or cognitive problems that we see on the screen here, these are a sampling of a large variety of cognitive problems that you have to have an association. When we make the diagnosis of a dementia, and I have people coming into me, the so-called worried well, but understandably worried because as we said, many of these problems begin in people's 20s or 30s or 40s, and that's when they start to notice the problems. Um, but they come to me with memory difficulty. I would not make a diagnosis of a dementia until someone actually has a loss of function.